Welcome to video number three. In this video, we're going to build a Julia set by remapping a circle on the complex plane. This technique is visually quite interesting because it allows us to visualize Julia sets in a different way. And it may give us a better understanding as to why the Julia sets have such interesting properties. So let's begin. In the first video, we saw how we can represent iterating over a complex function as a ball on the complex plane. We can follow where the ball is going to see how the orbit evolves. Likewise, I could actually start with a whole group of balls. And while this animation is quite fun to look at, for the purpose of simply drawing the fractal, we don't really care where these balls end up. We only care if they escape the radius 2 boundary or if they stay localized. That's not to say the orbits are unimportant. They are actually quite fascinating in their own right as we saw in the first video. But to simply make a drawing, we only need to know if they escape. Likewise with a Julia set, the center pixel at z equals zero is actually the same orbit as the one in the Mandelbrot set. But to simply plot an image, we don't really care where each ball goes, only whether it escapes or not. As a side note, the value of c for this Julia set is within the period two circle of the Mandelbrot set. It seems that all the orbits in this set also have period two. Once the orbits settle down, you will notice that a few of them are confined to the radius 2 circle. These are the orbits that begun in the black area of the filled Julia set. If our goal is to build the Julia set image step by step, it is the starting locations of these orbits that we are interested in. So let's start with a radius 2 circle instead. The radius of the circle is the zone of confinement for the orbits that will never escape. Remember that we said if an orbit goes outside this circle, it's guaranteed to escape. Here I've plotted the circle with some color variations and some lines showing a polar grid. The more interesting question to ask is, given any point in this circle, where did the orbit that finishes here come from? For the Mandelbrot set, that is a very challenging question but not so for the Julia sets, because C is always constant. We can wind the clock back one step by reversing the equation, solving for the initial value of Z. We get the equation Z initial equals the square root of Z final minus C. So for any point on our radius two circle, if an orbit finishes there, we can find out where it came from one iteration earlier. Of course, we can repeat this process by iterating over our new equation again and again. That means for any point, we can find out where the orbit that finishes there came from. If we did this for every point over an infinite amount of iterations, we would finish with exactly a filled Julia set. In practice, we can't perform an infinite amount of iterations, but it turns out that we get a pretty good approximation with only a few. In this case, let's perform 50 iterations of our backwards Julia set equation, and we arrive at quite a pretty filled Julia set. We'd like to see how the Julia set is built step by step, so let's examine the result of this equation one step at a time. Now, our new equation can just be thought of a remapping on the complex plane. The idea of a map is really just a useful way to see how a complex function behaves. With real numbers, we'd just use a graph, but for complex numbers, we'd need four dimensions. So instead we place an image on the complex plane, often a grid, and plot where each point ends up after applying the function. To grasp this idea, it is important to understand how the square root function maps our image. 
This is the opposite of squaring. So we take the square root of the radius and halve the angle. Notice that a circle is squeezed into a semicircle. Now you probably remember that the square root function always has two results, positive and negative. You are now looking at the positive branch. If I add the negative branch, it fills our image. If a point has a radius greater than 1 from the origin, taking the square root of the number pushes the point towards the radius 1 circle. Points with a radius less than 1, or all those points inside the unit circle, are generally pushed towards the edge of the circle. Of course, z equals 0 remains fixed. This is actually the Julia set of c equals 0, and we can iterate over it. Now back to our equation. Our equation can be broken into two steps. Z minus C shifts the image by C. Every point in the image is now C units from where it began. As the second step, we apply the square root function. If I repeat this process again, we start to get new and interesting shapes forming. It is only these two actions, a shift and a square root, that are needed to form complex Julia set shapes. You will notice that the square root function always makes a rotationally symmetrical image. That is why the Julia sets are always rotationally symmetrical. For future animations, I'll animate both the negative and positive parts of the square root together. It makes it a little easier on the eyes that way. Before we continue any further, let's have a look at two examples. It's important to remember that we are looking at an approximation. To form a true field Julia set, we'd need to perform infinitely many iterations. As you can see, the spirals keep growing with each iteration. This process explains visually why such spirals and other features have infinite depth, because it takes infinitely many steps to build them. The other interesting feature that we can explain visually is the fact that the Julia sets are either connected or infinitely disconnected. If the shift in C always places a coloured part of the image at the origin, the Julia set will never break apart. It will always be able to expand from the origin using the square root operation. However, if the shift in C ever places a point outside the image under the origin, the square root operation will break the image. Infinitely many iterations will then follow, smashing the image to pieces. In fact, the pieces become so small that they disappear from the screen, because each piece is smaller than a pixel. 
and that is why we colour the outside of the Julia set under normal circumstances. There are two values of C that create fundamental shapes. Z equals zero creates the unit circle, as we saw earlier. Z equals minus two creates a perfect thin line. It is too thin to see with this animation technique, so instead I'll animate a point nearby. This does explain the needle at the end of the Mandelbrot set. That's it for this video, please subscribe and share. I'll leave you with a few more animations, so stick around for a couple of minutes if you think you'll enjoy them.